Are you prepared for a storm? Or in this case, are you prepared for after? We need to be just as cautious and just as ready to be able to take care of issues after the storm. One of the things you want to consider is that many areas will now be flooded and we don't know the source of that water. That water may contain bacteria from septic tanks or sewage lines, so always assume that that water is not going to be something you want to spend a whole lot of time in. Yes, you may have to walk through it, so have some boots prepared, have some gloves, so that you could put those on if you needed to walk through that type of water. Additionally, pay attention for things that might be floating. Individuals' sheds and garages have been disturbed, and you may have paint or pesticides, other toxic chemicals floating out there. Those will need to be gathered up and taken to your local area that will collect toxic wastes. Here in Okaloosa County, that's through our road department. So make sure that those are taken to those locations, not simply put on the curb like household trash. Check your records now. Is your tetanus shot up to date? You need one every 10 years. And if you think it's gonna be running out soon, get it before the storm. So to make sure that if you happen to step on that nail or stick your hand into some metal, that you're not gonna become ill because of that situation. For those folks that are on municipal water, listen for those warnings about, hey, you need to boil your water. And for anything that you're going to need, water for cooking, make sure that it's been boiled before you drink it or use it for your foods. One of the other things we're going to see is downed power lines. You may not see where all of them are. So be cautious, look for those lines and make sure that they've not been taken down by limbs. If they are covered by limbs, assume that all power lines are live that there is electricity and they have the potential to kill you. Don't handle that yourself. The power company will take care of that. Worry about the limbs that you can reach, not the ones that are near power lines. There's gonna be a lot of debris laying on the ground. A lot of it is going to be plant material. It may be so large that you're going to require equipment to clean it up. If you are not comfortable operating a chainsaw or a chipper, don't do it yourself. If you're going to, make sure that you are covered in all the correct safety gear. You need to have Kevlar gloves, Kevlar chaps covering your hands and your legs. You need to have a safety helmet, safety glasses. When working with these extremely powerful pieces of equipment, it's extremely easy for people to get hurt especially if they don't do this on a regular basis. If you operate a chainsaw, the very tip of that chainsaw is the most dangerous part. You will never ever cut with the tip of a chainsaw. It's very likely to kick back, have that chain coming towards you and actually cause extreme physical damage. Chainsaws are very powerful. So if you think you might be using one, now would be the time to look at where can I find one that I'm comfortable handling and what kind of equipment will I need to protect my body while I'm using it. And maybe even practice with it so that you're comfortable on those hot days working with this piece of equipment. You may be without power for an extended period of time, and you may have already invested in a generator or considering ingesting, uh, investing in a generator at this point. Again, read the instructions on it, know how to operate it. That generator is going to exhaust carbon monoxide, very toxic to breathe. So make sure that wherever that op the generator is operating, there is fresh air. That means it's not in the garage, it's not on the front porch, and it's certainly not in the middle of the kitchen. Don't run it inside any building. So if that means you're gonna to have to have an extension cord running from the generator into the appliances that you're trying to keep going, 
make sure that those extension cords are indoor, outdoor, and can handle the weather that you are dealing with. That it's going to be wet and it doesn't have any frays in it. Now's the time to inspect those cords and correct any of those deficiencies or replace them. Have them ready to go because they're going to be hard to find after the storm. There may not even be a store open to get one at that time. And generators go quickly following storms. They will need to be refueled with gasoline. Need to store that gasoline in advance and again store it safely. You never want to refuel a generator while it's hot. Turn it off, let it rest, then refuel before you crank it up again. But while you're out there cleaning up the yard and picking up all that debris, remember it's not just what was in your yard. It could be things that have been blown in from quite some distance. There may be some sheet metal or asbestos uh, materials from other houses or buildings that's now in your yard. And these can pose both safety and health hazards. So have yourself a pair of really good work gloves while you're picking up these materials. You just never know what you're gonna find under some of these limbs. While you're picking up some of the brush piles that have settled here and there, don't forget about all of the creatures who now do not have a place to be. So you may be surprised to turn over a pile and find snakes, spiders, lizards. They're hiding in that debris. Unfortunately, some of them may be venomous. If you're unfamiliar with what our venomous snakes are, now's the time to learn the features of them. But never ever stick your hand into a brush pile without knowing what's in there. Disturb it with a tool first and give the opportunity for those animals that might be in there to go somewhere else. And if that includes a venomous snake, hopefully you've avoided any trips to the hospital from being bit by one. This is going to be a time in which services are not very readily available and you're kind of on your own for at least a couple of days. So make sure that you have got the water, the safety equipment, and the understanding of the things that you are going to be doing to keep yourself safe.